Hey guys, and welcome to another intro of the Modeler. This is now part two of my A-Wing Starfighter build. All right, so before I move ahead with assembly, I actually want to do some detailing here that I uh, often reserve this towards the end. Uh, however, um, if you look on the box here, there's some detail I'd like to try and duplicate. Uh, you can see the scorching from underneath this panel here and on the opposite side. And this is something that is seen on a studio miniature as well. And I think I can uh, accomplish or address this with it unassembled better than I can if I had it put together. Uh, so I'm going to do that and apply a wash to darken up the panel lines. And then uh, once we're done with this step, I'll start assembly, but I am going to try and light up the engine, so I will uh, uh, let you in on what I have planned for that. So let me go ahead and get started with this step now. So in order to accomplish that effect, I'm going to go ahead and use this Tamiya weathering kit. And you can see I've already applied it here to this front panel, and I just took a little bit of it and uh, just kind of used my applicator here along the edge. You can see it gives us a nice feathered, scorched appearance. And I'm now applying it to this end. I just mask this panel off here and just gently applying our effect here now. So uh, there are a number of washes available on the market that are already pre-made. This is one example here. Um, for this particular project, I'm just using the stuff that I've made uh, on my own using a combination of just water and just inexpensive craft paint that you can get at Michael's. Uh, and I'd say it's about 10% paint. The rest is just water. Um, and I just change the mixture depending on what I'm working with. So um, with this here, you just apply it, uh, as you saw there, with just a brush, and um, you try to accumulate the, uh, the paint along these edges, like here, just to um, add some more soot and grime, and um, along these here as well. Uh, the body, you're not able to tell in this lighting too much here, but um, it actually in person looks pretty good, I'd say. Not overdone. And um, so it just darkens things up, allows those panel lines to show up a bit, as you can see. And then this is the bottom section. And I've already uh, placed a dull coat on it, so everything is now set in place. So I will do more of this later, uh, but I just wanted to, as I mentioned, just get the uh, scorching here and here in particular. And uh, so now let's go ahead and proceed forward with assembling the rest of the ship, and we'll talk about lighting. All right, so this is my plan for lighting. Uh, so first of all, as I've mentioned in the video I did about lighting, is you want to think about you know, what you want to accomplish here, the size of your model, spaces you have to work with, and so forth. So we have a 172 scale model kit. Uh, it means our pieces are small, the spaces are going to be kind of tight. So the SMD chip size lights are going to be a perfect choice here. The lights are small, the wires are very thin. So uh, the lights I've ordered are chip size SMD lights from modeltrainsoftware.com. They don't flicker, they're just orange in color. Now, this is the way the assembly is supposed to go here. So we have the tail section, we have this piece A1, which is a clear piece, and now we have this B8 piece that fits onto here. So um, what I decided to do was to drill a hole into this B8 piece and actually plan to mount this in reverse. Uh, because as you can see, this indentation here means this one side is cupped. And uh, rather than trying to squeeze the light into that cupped section there, we'll have a flat area that the light can be mounted nice and flush. So the wires will then run forward this way. We have these covers that fit over this section. I'm going to drill a small little hole to accommodate the wires. Again, nice thing about the SMDs is the wires are fairly thin, so you don't need a very large opening there. And the wires will feed through and forward to the ship. All right, so this is one of those pieces. This is the B8 piece that you see here. I have a hole already drilled into it here in the center. And uh, this is what the A1 piece looks like. You can see it's clear. And uh, what I've done is to apply a dull coat just to help with light diffusion. And for the power source, we're going to be using a 3-volt battery. We don't have a lot of room underneath the stand that I'm planning for this uh, display. So uh, we need to limit our battery size. And this already comes pre-wired with a switch. All right, so this is how they're being mounted. One easy way to do this is actually just to secure everything in one place here, and that way uh, you have very little chance that the light's going to move around. You do have to give the super glue enough time to dry and solidify. Uh, it's very difficult to do that if they're still moving around. So uh, this one's already done. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little super glue to this one here. 
Okay, this is one of the assembled light pieces. And this is what it'll look like when it's mounted into the engine. Alright, so getting ready to assemble the engines, but uh, I want to do a little work here on the tail section. Uh, you can see these scorch marks that need to be added, and the perfect thing for doing that is the Tamiya weathering kit. So I'm just using the applicator here, and just taking our pigment and just wiping it along. You can see it creates this nice feather effect. Okay, and this is how the two tail sections are turning out so far. I'm going to do a little bit more weathering before we move on to assembly. All right, so this is how the engines are being wired up. Uh, we've got our light here now glued on to the clear piece. You can see there's a little black here, and that's because I took some tulip paint and coated this side here just to avoid any light leakage. I doubt there is any, but just want to be sure. I cut a groove into here and also cut some grooves into this piece as well. We're just going to feed the wire through and the wire will feed forward towards the ship. So I'm just going to now attach this piece onto here. And there you have it. So we have this one, and this one's all ready to go as well. All right, so in order to uh, attach the engines, I did have to take apart the front section of the ship, which makes me glad I didn't glue anything. And uh, by the way, I'm finding that this ship does piece together nice and tight, so you really don't need to apply a lot of glue to begin with. Uh, I did make some modifications here and on the opposite side to allow threading of the wire through here. And uh, as we feed the wires through, we're going to drill a hole here to give us access to where they're going to feed through to the stand. Well, I know I said I wasn't interested in lining the cockpit, but I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, I ordered uh, a nano-sized SMD light, also from modeltrainsoftware.com. And um, I was just looking at the cockpit and I figured I could just give it a try to install it uh, right here in the very center. So there's a tiny area right there that I mounted it to and fed the wire underneath the pilot and down this way and drilling a hole into this section that'll help us feed the wire through. And when I light it, it actually looks pretty good. It's um, you know just a, a glowing yellow light there. So uh, it'll add just a little bit more to the model. All right, well, that was something I couldn't uh, record. I had to use both hands to do this. I had to back out the engines a little bit while I pieced the front halves back together again. Uh, so now everything is assembled with the wires feeding through. So that was a little bit of a task. I was just afraid I was going to snap something, but luckily everything held together. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. We'll pick up in the next video with the base, and we'll complete the project. In the meantime, I just wanted to show you some pictures here of a test lighting I did of both the cockpit and the engines. You can see the lighting is working out pretty well. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at intercellularmodeler at gmail.com. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and thanks for watching.